Hi, this is Andrew with Ask Him on TV, and I'm very happy to be joined today by Dr. Sivan Arbach. She is trained in child development, psychology, education, and special education, and is one of the nation's leading professionals on children's play and educational toys. She is known as Dr. Toy and is the author of Smart Play, Smart Toys, How to Raise a Child with a High PQ Play Quotient. Dr. Toy, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Andrew. I'm really pleased to be here and to talk to you about play and toys. It's my favorite subject. Um, likewise, I'm happy to talk about it as well. And I want to talk to you specifically about toy industry worldwide. In what ways does culture play a role in the type of play children are and should develop, as well as the kinds of toys they prefer? Well, culture is very much a part of children's play. Um, play starts in the home and is very much based on the culture that the child is living in and what the parents are exposed to and want to expose the child to and what type of toy stores they go to. So it all goes hand in hand, and that's what makes the diversity in the world so interesting. Um, toys reflect that because as you look at the entire toy industry, it reflects the whole range of culture. Uh, from the entire uh, gamut of the entire world. So you see toys from every country and made in every country in different ways. Um, culture is uh, also reflected in the way children play. Some quietly, some are very noisy. And it yeah. depends on what um, their in culture is. In 2007, um, some might call that the year of the recall. What happened and what has been done to prevent this from reoccurring? Well, it was a very uh, difficult and challenging year. It was the year that some companies were not, got careless about what they did in the factories and what they um, produced. They weren't being careful about the quality control. And as a result, toys that were unsafe came to the toy stores and had to be recalled. As a result of that, many changes happened, uh, more strict uh, enforcement, uh, more quality control, uh, more testing, uh, and so on. And um, there's been uh, a lot of improved guidance about toy safety. Uh, that was the year that I had the experience of doing 31 interviews in one day in a satellite media tour to uh, assure people that uh, toys were in fact safe and there were many toys that were available that were safe and that the unsafe toys were, had been pulled off the market and uh, were not available. Uh, so sometimes when a problem happens, good things can come out of it. And so I think it's resulted in some uh, better awareness and better respect for the quality process in making toys. Um, the, I want to talk about and ask you the inter, about the international toy industry and if they've had any problems or consequences as a result of economic shift like other industries have had. Absolutely. You know, um, toys are a reflection of our society and the economy. And when there is a global economy and awareness of it, what happens in one country affects everybody and it becomes a domino effect. Um, if there's less money available in any country, then parents are not going to be able to spend what they might uh, on toys. So what we want, of course, is um, a thriving economy with uh, plenty of jobs and plenty of financial ability for parents to be able to afford to buy the toys, buy the materials, and buy the uh, necessities for children. And so whatever happens in um, in the economy does affect everybody. And uh, certainly in the production of toys, it makes a big difference also. And how have the toy uh, industry adapted to this change in the economy? Well, what, what I can see is that the cost of toys have changed. Um, sometimes things had not cost quite as much. The uh, costs have increased 
um, it becomes more costly to bring things to market because of the increase in um, in uh, what it costs to produce a product. Um, hopefully, um, uh, this is shifting, and they're able to find new ways to do things. Uh, for example, I know a company that's making products not far from where I am right now and doing some new techniques that have made it cost effective. Um, I think we need to be looking at uh, new ways to make toys and uh, keep the costs down and make them affordable and accessible to everybody. That's, ex that's an exciting challenge. To what extent are women accepted or welcomed into the toy industry? I'm glad you asked that question because women have been pioneers in the toy industry uh, from the very beginning as inventors, as heads of the companies, working in companies, uh, in sales and marketing. Uh, there's an international organization called Women in Toys, which I was at the first dinner 20 years ago, and um, it's, a, it's thriving. Uh, women, not only in toys, but in the world, are making uh, enormous contributions alongside their partners, uh, men. And uh, I think together, we'll make a better world through working cooperatively and figuring out how toys can improve um, the, the world of play for children and adults as well. Well, I love talking with you about toys, and this topic was, again, really interesting. So thank you very much for interviewing with me. Oh, you're very welcome, and thank you for inviting me to talk about play and toys, too. Have fun.